two, three, testing, one, two, three, audio check, one, two, three, testing, one, two, audio check, one, two, three, you're good, everybody good, audio check, one, two, three, everybody's good, cool, cool, I think everybody's good, all right, thank you. Heather, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to announce Jill. You're going to announce Jill? Is she ready? Yeah. Is she so cold? Ladies and gentlemen, our program is about to begin. Please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Orlando Partnership Board President Leo Alvarez and DOP Executive Director Jill Vaughn. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today at the 2022 State of Downtown, presented by OUC, the reliable one, uh, at the beautiful Luminary Green. 
Thank you to everyone who carried the vision and dedication of Creative Village forward. You helped transform this site, this park, and our collective future. For 61 years, the Downtown Orlando Partnership has convened, collaborated, and led a bold vision to help build a powerful city center. As a membership organization, we are driven to serve our downtown business community. Our members empower us. Together, we aim to improve our city and serve as an active conduit of information and resources. Great cities are built by people. The creators of industry, makers of place, vision builders, innovators, investors, educators, and accelerators. DOP's partnership with the City of Orlando, Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer, and the Downtown Development Board exemplifies our unified vision that strong downtowns are built through teamwork and collaboration. Together, we build an economically resilient city center. Together, we make downtown better, stronger, and more diverse. Together, we contribute to the growth and evolution of downtown Orlando and make downtown Orlando a premier destination to live, work, learn, play, and stay. We would like to take a moment to recognize the City of Orlando commissioners who have helped shape our downtown vision. Jim Gray, Tony Ortiz, Robert Stewart, Patty Sheehan, Regina Hill, and Bakari Burns. And thank you to all of the other elected officials who are here uh, today. A heartfelt thank you to Leo and to the DOP Board of Directors, our Chairman Circle, our downtown champions, and all of our investors. The 2022 State of Downtown would not be possible without the support of our incredible sponsors. Thank you to our event sponsors, AT&T, Charlene Brock Architects, the Downtown Development Board, Fairwinds, the Greater Orlando Sports Commission, Lime, Mill Creek Residential, the Orlando Economic Partnership, Orlando Health, Orlando Magic, University of Central Florida and Valencia College, the Usler Group of Companies. We really couldn't do this event without all of their support. In addition to our sponsors, we are very excited to welcome our downtown reception partners. Today, you'll be able to have a sampling of a taste of downtown. So we would like to thank the Monroe, Dex Dexter's Birdland, Discover Downtown, Greenery Creamery, Patty Lou's Donuts, Project DTO 2.0, Reyes, and Taco Cat. I know you'll really enjoy um, sampling all of the things that these community partners have brought today. And finally, I would like to thank our presenting sponsor, OUC, the reliable one. This has been a true partnership, and I thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce Britta Gross, Board President of the Orlando Utilities Commission. Thank you for joining us today at the 2022 State of Downtown, presented by OUC, the reliable one. Oh, what a beautiful day out here today in Orlando, isn't it? As President of OUC's Board of Commissioners, we're honored to be a part of the city that shines as brightly as Orlando. We've been long invested in the city beautiful because it's our home too. Being part of this community drives us to do our very best for the people who live in it, especially in times of emergencies. When Hurricanes Ian and Nicole recently knocked out power to thousands and created water main breaks, OUC expended every resource we had to restore services quickly. OUC and the city have a lot in common when it comes to priorities. We're focused on progress for our community through sustainability and innovation. As OUC looks ahead to our 100 year anniversary, next year by the way, we reflect on a history that's been defined by innovation, one that's played a central role in our utilities advancement and relevance to Orlando's growth and prosperity. By diversifying our power generation portfolio, leveraging more and more renewables, energy storage solutions and new technology, we're making significant strides toward our goal of reaching net zero carbon emissions by 2050. With the commitment of $420 million to solar technology and $90 million to energy storage, 
as well as our announcement to retire the Stanton Energy Center's Unit 1 coal plant no later than 2025. We're on track to reach a 50% reduction in carbon emissions by 2030. And OUC helped make Orlando one of the top 10 EV-ready cities in the United States. Today, we support more than 350 charging stations for electric vehicles, many downtown. And next year, the new Robinson Recharged Mobility Hub will add 20 high-speed, publicly available plug-in charging stations. OUC, the city, and Lynx have worked together to electrify public transportation as well. And our partnership led to the introduction of eight battery-powered buses on Orlando's roads. Another six e-buses are due to come next year. In their first year of service, the e-buses eliminated over 100 tons of carbon dioxide emissions that would have been emitted had they been diesel-powered buses. At our Gardenia Innovation and Operations Center, we're testing renewable energy and technologies that include a floating solar array, battery storage, vehicle-to-grid technologies, and conventional EV charging stations, and a hydrogen system that includes an electrolyzer, storage tanks, and fuel cells. OUC is a leader in the adoption of solar energy. By 2025, we expect to produce 496 megawatts of solar energy, enough to power 90,000 typical Florida homes. As we look to a cleaner, greener tomorrow, our many collaborations with the city will help ensure the next generation of progress and sustainability. Thank you all. Please welcome Thomas C. Chapman, Jr., Executive Director of the Downtown Development Board and Community Redevelopment Agency. Thank you. Hello, Downtown Orlando. All right, guys, it's time to get this party started now. What's up, DTO Nation? If you agree with me that this is a wonderful, fabulous day that our Lord has made and another occasion for us to come together and show our love for downtown, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. You don't know it, but there's some out-of-town consultants in the audience. And they're studying downtown Orlando. But they don't really know how we roll, so I want to give them just a little taste. So if you, like I know that you do, if you love your downtown, let me hear you say, I love DTO. Come on, guys. I love DTO. I love. DTO. I lo I'll stop it there. I think they get. I think they get the point. Get the point. And you know what? You love DTO. DTO loves you back. And you're going to hear a lot more about that in a moment. But the message from today, because it's time for the man of the hour. Many, if not most of you, may not have seen him since this occasion last year. And if you check his schedule and his work regimen, you never know it, or even if you'd have the opportunity to interact with him, you'd never know that for the mayor and his family, it's been a very difficult year, a tragic year, a painful year, a soul-searching year. He has led his family through that adversity the very same way he leads our, us through ours, with unwavering strength and steadiness as backed by wisdom and experience, grounded in faith, and emanating, always emanating from a position of deep, abiding love. So he's come through it all. And Mayor, I tip my hat to you. Many prayers have been with you and your family as you've come through it. And so he's still the visionary behind the plans, the motivator, behind the implementation of those plans, yes, he wants us to get it done. History, note that he is already the longest serving mayor in the history of the, center of the city beautiful, and we all know he's the best downtown mayor in America today. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, DTO Nation, if you will, stand with me now, and please welcome, show your love for our mayor, the best downtown mayor in America today, the most honorable, Buddy Dyer.
I guess I walked faster than I was supposed to for my <laughs> very slow walk-up music. Um, you know, today is just an awesome day. We like to say around City Hall that these are the days that we live for. They're not all the days we live for, but this particular one is one of those days that we live for. It's December in Florida. How awesome is that? So, um, Thomas has been through his own adversity this year and, um, you know, has battled through a lot and wanted to, is back full time in his job with the city and wanted to make sure that he was here to be able to do that introduction. And we deeply appreciate your service and the adversity that you have gone through, Thomas. So, I'd ask you all to give Thomas a big heartfelt hand. Okay, you ready? So, story of Orlando is a story of resilience, reinvention, rebirth. For more than 150 years, Central Florida has been a land of opportunity, a place where people come to work hard, dream big, and pursue a brighter future for their children and their grandchildren. And that spirit of resilience and reinvention and rebirth was present way back in 1843 when settlers decided that Mosquito County wasn't actually the best name if you wanted people to come to your area. So that first reinvention gave birth to Orange County, which led to the city of Jernigan, which eventually became what we know and we love today, the city of Orlando. So decade after decade since, resilience, reinvention, and rebirth has defined Orlando. From cattle ranches, making way for the citrus industry, to becoming a military training center before and during World War II, to our rise as the global epicenter, use that term just for you, Commissioner, the global epicenter for hospitality, to becoming a home for modeling, simulation, and training, through booms and busts, through successes, challenges, and even tragedies, our constant has been reinvention, resilience, and rebirth. So it shouldn't be a surprise that coming out of a global pandemic, Orlando is primed for another cycle of reinvention. Now, the reason that we chose to have this conversation at our annual State of the Downtown Address is because downtown Orlando is the focal point of the oncoming wave of reinvention. At this moment, a confluence of opportunities that include the shifting nature of office work, a growing demand for technology, a mass migration to Orlando, and the desire for a higher quality of life and urban living, and an exploding need for quality, affordable housing are all meeting in downtown Orlando. And that means we have a history-making opportunity right here in downtown Orlando. And today, we're going to talk about how we'll take advantage of this opportunity and continue to create prosperity for everybody who calls Central Florida home. So, before we dive in, it's important to understand how we got here. When we first started working together, headlines called downtown Orlando a ghost town. There were jokes about tumbleweeds rolling through the streets. Who remembers that? Anybody? Okay. A lot of head nodding, and then there's a lot of people that are under 40 and don't quite remember that. Out of that reality, our community acted boldly, reshaped downtown with iconic gateway projects that would double the amount of residents living in our urban core, add world-class, world-class community venues, including the Dr. Phillips Center, the Amway Center, and a refurbished Camping World Stadium, and add green space with constitutional green, luminary green, and expanding Lake Eola Park. Our hard work helped to create close to 28,000 jobs and breathe life into our downtown. And as we succeeded, we didn't waste time congratulating ourselves. Instead, we doubled down on our achievements. In 2014, we got together once again and collectively asked, what's next? The resounding answer was education. 
So we set to work reinv to reinvent downtown once more as an educational hub, an engine for opportunity for every single person who lives in or has continuity with our urban core. We closed our eyes and imagined a cradle to career pathway for our young people in Paramore. We closed our eyes and imagined a place that leveraged education as an opportunity escalator with anyone connected to downtown. Look around, look around right now. Just take a second and look around. Some of you may not have been here since the old Amway Arena was here and was imploded. The results of that imagination are all around us here in Creative Village. We reinvented an aging arena and a sea of surface parking into a neighborhood K-8 school for Paramore youth that are right behind these buildings. The UCF and Valencia downtown campuses where thousands of students activate in this neighborhood every single day. The Valencia Center for Accelerated Training that provides residents with short-term instruction and a pathway to secure jobs in high demand, high wage industries. There's 640 student housing units right over here. There's a mix of nearly a thousand new affordable, attainable, and market rate multifamily housing options. We certainly can't forget the next great amenity for Creative Village, and that's Luminary Green, where we're right now. This is an iconic space where residents and visitors can play outdoors and take part in signature events like State of the Downtown. At night, it comes alive with interactive light installations. Now, the luminary part of Luminary Green isn't just about the light, though. This park is literally dedicated to and will feature the names of luminaries from Paramore who made Orlando what it is today and remain a guiding light as we work together to forge a brighter future. In total, the Creative Village represents $2 billion worth of public-private investment. And we're hearing from people who haven't had the opportunity to experience this area because of the pandemic, change their work requirements or commutes or leisure activities. Many of you, raise your hand if you have not been here since all this has gone up. Not a single, oh, okay, a few hands. So I see a stunned expression out there. There's a lot of people that are stunned about what's happening here. And this is more than just the great shiny new buildings. This is actually a city within a city dedicated to unlocking the awesome power of education and opportunity for everybody by nurturing our young people and creating students that are trained for the jobs of today and tomorrow, attracting companies like the East Coast headquarters of Electronic Arts that want to hire those students, providing an unmatched quality of life like dining over at the Monroe, and creating a neighborhood designed for entrepreneurship, partnership, collaboration, so that new companies are created and grown right here. To illustrate how this is benefiting us, look no further than our Paramore Kids Zone initiative. Since 2006, PKZ has served more than 7,000 students with academic support, health and wellness programs. It also helped to reduce juvenile arrest rates by 77%. That's pretty good, right, Chief? Program recently moved into the beautifully renovated Grand a Avenue Neighborhood Center. And with the help of our partners at the Orlando Science Center, we're getting young residents ready for the careers of today and tomorrow that are being created in our own neighborhood by providing STEM education with the support of, yeah, NASA. How awesome is that? I just kind of like looking out at you guys. Looks pretty good out here on Luminary Green. So it'd be easy to look at all that we're doing in Creative Village and say, mission accomplished. But guess what? That's not what we do here in Orlando. In Orlando, we say, what's next? In Orlando, we say, how do we build on what we've done to expand prosperity and opportunity to more people? In Orlando, we say, what more can we do to create incredible career opportunities for the students from PKZ and every young person in Central Florida? One answer, and you haven't guessed this, but it's the metaverse. What is the metaverse? Okay. 
Commissioner Hill's like shrugging her shoulders. Uh, so imagine you could travel back in time to the early 90s. You were able to tell someone what the biggest driver of the global economy would be for the next three decades. What would you say? Obviously, you would probably say the internet, right? Well, the metaverse is going to be, for the next three decades, what the internet was for the previous three decades. The metaverse is a foundation of technology economy moving forward. Going a little deeper, the metaverse is the virtual world in which people live, work, shop, and interact with others, all from the comfort of the physical world. It's the fusion of a host of emerging technologies, augmented reality, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, 3D reconstruction, gaming, the Internet of Things. A prime example of metaverse technology is the first regional digital twin of its scale in the world that has been built by the Orlando Economic Partnership. Our digital twin is a virtual copy of 800 square miles of Metro Orlando that looks identical to and has the potential to mimic its real world counterpart. The value of this digital twin is that it's able to simulate changes that we want to make to the real world before we make them so that we can see their impacts. It can be used as a public resource allowing transportation experts to see how a rail system might impact the region or for utility companies to map out 5G networks or for ecologists to study the potential impacts of climate change. Another example of being broadcast, or another example is being broadcast on the Electronic Arts building right now. You might not be able to see it through the trees, but you can see it on the video boards here, I hope. And that is actually my digital double that is on the screen. Very handsome, right? The team at EA had me take part in the same process that they use for professional athletes to create their virtual counterparts for cutting edge immersive games. In case anybody at EA is wondering, I wouldn't be opposed to being included in the upcoming season of Madden. And I did play tight end and defensive end in high school. So seriously, if there's any NIL lawyers out there, I'm your guy. So why is the metaverse so important to Orlando and to downtown Orlando in particular? That's because the metaverse is literally being created right here in Orlando. Orlando talent and technology has been pushing the boundaries of immersive experience, digital entertainment, 3D modeling and simulation ever since the beginning of the space race. And for nearly 15 years now, UCF's FIA graduate video game development program has been one of the top five programs in the world and has ranked number one, num the number one program in the nation for the past three years. How about that? This foundation has allowed us to become the leading area in the United States that's building the metaverse. At this moment, this moment, the highest concentration of game developer licenses in the entire country are right here in Central Florida. LinkedIn calls us the fastest growing city in America for entrepreneurs. We're the fastest growing United States city for IT talent and the second fastest growing city for tech worker salaries. And that's why the companies that are building the metaverse has set up shop and are investing in our community, like Unity, Electronic Arts, Echo Interactive, Brand XR, and 302 Interactive. To take advantage of this position, we're planting Orlando's flag in the ground as America's premier city and region for all things metaverse. So today, I am proud to stand with all of you and declare that Orlando is the Meta Center of the metaverse. <laughs> the meta center of the metaverse. So look, we know, and there are still some blank faces out there, that many people are just beginning to hear about the metaverse, right? Okay, I'll concede that. 
But this is really a once in a generation opportunity and it's very real and very much within our grasp. To emphasize the point, right now, right now there are 2,500 open tech jobs in our community. 2,500 high wage, in demand careers, many of which are helping to build the metaverse. And want to hear something else that's really cool? Okay, this is the cool factor for the whole speech right now. So get ready for it. This event is being broadcast in the metaverse right now. So thanks to our partners at Metaverse Construction Company and 302 Interactive, both local companies, it is actually the very first mayoral address ever given in the metaverse. Hey, that was one of the big takeaways. So if you're a technology worker experiencing this event from somewhere else in the metaverse, maybe you like 300 days of sunshine and a day in December just like this. Uh, no state income tax, but most importantly, a community that welcomes and embraces diversity and equity and equality. So this is not to this audience, this is to that audience that's out there watching the metaverse. Consider this your personal invitation from the mayor of Orlando. We want to share what we're building here in the metaverse. We want you in Orlando. Tell them, we want you in Orlando. So inviting the world to do business in Orlando's Meta Center is one more reason why we must continue to build a downtown that competes with great downtowns around the world. It's one more reason we must have a downtown that truly has something for everyone and is exceptional, exceptional every single day. And that's where Project DTO 2.0 comes in. Eight years ago, the original Project DTO sparked our emergence as an academic and innovation destination. It also made downtown more walkable. It added tons of green space and expanded opportunities for urban living. But there's more work to do. There's more potential to unlock. We're fortunate to build a strong foundation, and now it's time to take the next steps. For decades, American downtowns have been designed as business, cultural, and entertainment hubs where people enter and then exit in large numbers, in and out, like an accordion. This dynamic certainly applies to Orlando. But the nature of traditional office work and commuting is evolving. That decade-old in-and-out model is changing. How people experience a downtown and what they want out of an urban environment is changing too. So taking advantage of this evolution is what DTO 2.0 is all about. Over the last year, we've engaged in a shared planning process to ensure that downtown grows our business, cultural, and entertainment amenities while also creating an urban neighborhood environment. And why a neighborhood? Because people don't just come in and out of neighborhoods, they live there. They invest there, they make memories there. Neighborhoods don't just have one or two big reasons to draw people in. Neighborhoods are a collection of a million reasons why people spend time there and even draw their identities from there. Neighborhoods are diverse and dynamic. Neighborhoods have their own authentic character. So DTO 2.0, is an action plan for enacting dozens upon dozens of small steps that add up to one big evolution of downtown Orlando as its own urban neighborhood. To start, we're gonna redesign our infrastructure block by block. We're gonna turn some of our major one-way thoroughfares back to two-way streets to encourage more retail and other destination spaces. We're gonna in increase street cleaning. You didn't think we'd be here talking about street cleaning, but we're gonna, we think that is important. We'll add smaller scale attractions so that no matter what your age or your stage in life, there are reasons to visit our urban core. We'll upgrade our limo circulator so that it better serves residents and visitors and our urban workforce. We'll transform Lake Lucerne into the southern gateway of downtown. So we're gonna nurture more locally owned small businesses and retail to expand opportunity and help create the character 
that helps to define a neighborhood. We're implementing our master plan to continue improving our signature park at Lake Eola. And we're also bringing smaller scale art and cultural amenities throughout downtown. <coughs> Excuse me. That includes our new interactive art park, gallery and cafe that we're calling Art Square. Also, it's activating the space under I-4 into the new under I and a brand new mural that showcases what's unbelievably real about our community. While DTO is a long-term plan, we'll see key pieces in the immediate act, uh, action immediately. That includes our most important job, keeping everybody safe. We're creating a unique live, work, learn, and play environment here, but the play dynamic must be safe, particularly at night. That's why we're working to amend our land development code to increase safety at night by better regulating parking lots, reducing nuisances, and enhancing our noise ordinances. This work goes hand in hand with what our police department is doing to combat crime everywhere. OPD has increased the size and coverage of downtown patrol units, yes, during the day, and also with specialty officers for weekend nights. They've added police officers to all the patrol units responsible for downtown and the Paramore areas, and also created a tactical patrol unit specifically designed to impact violent crime and get crime guns off the street. So bringing our vision of an urban neighborhood, excuse me one sec, Bringing our vision of an urban neighborhood to life means continuing to create a downtown where everyone who wants to live can do so, regardless of income level. We've just helped clear the way for 194 more units of affordable housing as part of the Beacon development. That brings the total number of affordable housing units to more than 450 just right here around us in Creative Village. The second phase of Paramore Oaks in the south part of Paramore will be completed this summer, adding a, another 91 affordable housing units to our community. And later in 2023, Society Orlando is scheduled to open, adding close to 500 new apartments, including studios and lower cost options. The Commons is a recently announced project at the corner of Roslyn Avenue and Pine Street with a 400 unit, 25 story apartment tower with ground floor retail space and a three-story office building. The Edge is set to break ground in the next few months at Church Street. The 33-story tower includes 200 multifamily units, a hotel, office space, retail space, and an integrated sunrail station. So bringing our vision of an urban neighborhood to life also means continuing to take care of our most vulnerable neighbors. We partnered with First Step Staffing to locate its Orlando office in the heart of Paramore, where they have connected with more than 300 individuals experiencing homelessness with jobs and job training. And in July, we launched Accelerate Orlando, which leverages the $58 million in federal money that we received through ARPA to invest in Orlando's trusted service providers, including the Christian Service Center, Salvation Army, and Coalition for the Homeless to modernize their campuses, offer more wraparound services, grow daytime operations, which means and through Accelerate Orlando, we're investing in the conversion of the blighted Ambassador Hotel at Westmoreland and Colonial, turning it into 150 affordable apartments for families and individuals. We're working with the Zebra Coalition to turn another 22 hotel units into homes for LGBTQ plus youth. And we're gonna develop 80 apartments for workforce housing up to and up to 10 single family homes in Paramore and expand down payment support, housing counseling, and access to repairs for low income residents. Is this working when I turn this way? No. So it's working if I use the mic, because I wanted you to hear this part right here, so I wasn't sure about that. So while most cities had no choice but to use their ARPA funding 
to cover deficits they had incurred during the pandemic. We were different. Orlando was different. Our strong financial management through the crisis allowed us to use this federal money, the entirety of it, to make the most significant investment in our history to help care for those experiencing homelessness. So bringing our vision of an urban neighborhood to life means continuing to grow downtown Orlando as an urban environment that draws major events. This is Alan Johnson's piece of the pie here. We had so many this year. Who can convince, forget the excitement when Orlando City made its thrilling run to win the United States Open Cup trophy? I think that's as loud as I've ever heard that stadium that night. Go Lions. And we've also hosted all types of new kinds of events. We welcome the Special Olympics uh, USA Games here. We had the opening ceremony right here in Paramore. IPW, the travel industry's largest show, hosts an entire night in downtown Orlando, showcasing our city center to tens of thousands of hospitality professionals, thanks to our partnership with Visit Orlando. Once again, we welcome Synapse, a celebration of our region's innovators and in technology economy at the Dr. Phillips Center. And we opened Steinmetz Hall. Woo! <laughs> Completing our vision for a true world-class arts destination. The Fringe Arts Space at 55 West opens in January. And just last week, we expanded DTO for the holidays, a mix of events taking place throughout downtown, all of December, we lit the Christmas tree, the 70-foot Christmas tree, the Orlando Wonderland Christmas tree show, the snowfall at Lake Eola House, holiday markets, and guess what? Even a chance to visit with Santa. Our three bowl games kick off in a few days, and um, I think that Cheez-It Bowl with the Seminoles, um, yeah, I'm going to mention the Seminoles, believe it or not is already a sellout, so that's pretty darn cool. Um, the Magic have a bright future, one of the most exciting young teams in the NBA, and I was with some Magic executives on Sunday, and they tell me they're going to be healthy pretty soon, and they'll be tough to deal with. We got the Solar Bears, and in a few months, we'll have the return of the Pride and the Predators, plus a new team, the XFL's Orlando Guardians playing at Camping World Stadium. So fans of The Rock, he's the money behind that one. Once again, we'll play host to the first and second round games of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament in March. And the biggest news yet, in 2024, we're going to host the United States Olympic Marathon Trials. And we want our, yeah. We want our streets packed to cheer on the best runners in America as they compete on a course that will wind through our downtown. And as I understand it, it'll be six laps of a, either six laps of a four-mile course or four laps of a six-mile course, one of those two. But anyways, you can take your position in downtown and see the runners on multiple occasions instead of one time along the way. So they're competing for the honor of representing our country in the upcoming Paris Games, and that'll be right here in Orlando. So I know this has been a lengthy talk, and Commissioner Hill, it's not quite as long as your talk at City Council on Monday. <laughs> this is supposed to be 24 minutes, and yours was, I timed it, 27. Uh, but. Mine is because there's a lot of stuff going on right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's a lot going on in downtown and in Paramore and in Commissioner Hill's district, too. But none of it would be possible, though, without all of you that are gathered here today. And so please join us as we recognize and thank some of our partners. I want to. Um, start by thanking Susie, my beautiful wife, who is here in the front row with Kevin. 
You'll note she's wearing white boots, and she wears them a lot better than Governor DeSantis does. Okay, I'm not picking on anybody else or the rest of the way. Uh, I want to start by re-recognizing the elected leaderships of, leadership of our cities, and if you'd give each of them a hand. Commissioner Jim Gray. <laughs> Commissioner Tony Ortiz. Commissioner Robert to Regina Hill. And Commissioner Bakari Burns. We want to give a massive thank you to Jill Vaughn and the Downtown Orlando Partnership for hosting this event and providing this platform to focus on our beloved downtown. Thank you, Jill. Again to Mr. Downtown, Thomas Chapman and the entire team at the Downtown Development Board. And you know, maybe most importantly, at least for me, to every member of our city family. And especially this year was a tough year for everybody. The end of COVID, um, trying to get back into the workplace. Uh, most of the city workforce never worked from home. They were uh, working on the sanitary sewer or driving around in neighborhoods, making sure they're safe or collecting your garbage. Um, and your hard work and dedication are, are what makes this community so great and I know it inspires me I know it inspires the commissioners um, we get so much credit for a lot of the great things that the city does I'll go all the way to permitting where I get so many people that come in and say um, we love doing our permitting and inspection here in Orlando versus uh, other places <laughs> um, so I want to thank all of the city employees so if you are an employee of the city of Orlando, if you would just raise your hand and the rest of us, let's just say thank you. So to close this afternoon, the reinvention and rebirth we're talking about won't happen by itself. It'll only happen if we continue to prioritize partnership and collaboration. Partnership and collaboration, I don't ever talk about anything that I don't include partnership and collaboration, putting egos aside and getting all these great things done. And that's a lot better than the other nonsense and noise that's going on around us that can often paralyze progress. So for close to two decades, we've proudly proclaimed that partnership and collaboration is in fact our strategic advantage. And that sentiment is as true today as it was when we first started to imagine a future for our beloved downtown. So from the bottom of my heart, I hope each of you are as excited as I am about the future of downtown. I hope each of you feels the same sense of momentum that I do as we work together to unlock prosperity for everyone. So thank you for being here today, some in person, some on social media, and now some in the metaverse. God bless America, and today on Pearl Harbor Day, God bless all who died that day and all who have served or currently serve our country. God bless the city of Orlando, and God bless our downtown Orlando. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs>